shaitan who has learned from Prophet Muhammad And this link is unbroken. You have to understand. And it's not like anything. It's a link that is established. This teacher has learned from his teacher. It's not broken. They have the needs of each and every, as anyone knows what Nijaza is or has a Nijaza in anything, you know the Nijaza will say, and, 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 this, no, this, like, it will be like a whole page of names of like for 13 generations or so, or 14, or depends, all the way to Prophet Muhammad. The name will call me, who has heard it from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, And he's given it to you after checking every day, years and years of memorization and repeating with him to make sure there's not a single mistake, man. Not a single mistake. Then you're granted this ijazah, which you will pass on to those whom you will teach. Until the day of judgment, it's been passed on like that. Remember, you know exactly who this person is. Actually, we know exactly who each and every person in this chain is. We know who their tribe is, who their father is, what their names are, were they righteous people, did they pray Fajr or not, were they people who are engaged in sins or so on. We know everything about them, everything. What they did in terms of work, everything, man. To the last one, all of them. Compare that and contrast that, for example, to the very famous Gospel of John. Who is John? Can anyone tell me who is John? John? Anyone? Who is John? It's the gospel according to John. It's according to who? To John. But Allah says, Alhamdulillah alladhi anzal al-kitab al-abdi wa lam yaj'allahu iwaja. Allah is praising Himself that He has revealed this book. This is the Quran according to who? To Allah. Allah. Not according to, who's John? How much do we know about John? Actually, very, very little. Very little. Actually, we don't know almost nothing about John. Okay, Matthew, Mark, Luke. We know one of them was tax collector. One of them might have been a physician. That's it. Who was their father? Who was the father of their father? Were they righteous people? What did he do? What's their last name? What, what kind of... What, who are they? Who did they give this book to? Who took it and has brought it and sold it to us in the bookstore or they've reached the churches or wherever the Bibles are being put? Who? Who in these 2,000 years have passed this book down? Who are these people? See, in Islam, it's not the case. We know each and every single one of them to very minute details. And that's not only one chain. This is what's called the Quran is mutawatir. It has been passed on to us through so many different links that it will be impossible for anyone to change it or to lie about it. As we said last time, that everyone knows that the Second World War took place. This is an example of what's called mutawata. It's knowledge that's known. This is how the Quran was passed on. There's so many different things that it's impossible for it to be changed, to be lied about, or so on and so forth. So this is how the Quran, this is a compressed version of the history. If you want to know more, and learn more about this, and also about the Old and New Testament. This is a book called The History of the Quranic Text from the Revelation to Compilation. And it is by Mustafa Al Azami, M M Al Azami, A Z A M I. The History of the Quranic Text from Revelation to Compilation, a comparative study with the Old and New Testament. This is the book. Very good book. I really recommend it. It gives you a lot of insight into the Muslim education methodology, how the Quran has been passed on, comparing it a lot with the Bible, the Old Testament, and so on and so forth. 
So we need to, to wrap it up, brothers and sisters. We need to understand that Allah has guarded this Quran. There's no doubt about it. And actually, even some of these so kind of like fair orientalists have realized and have admitted that there is nothing like the Quran in terms of reliability, in terms of the text, the history of the Quran. There's nothing like it. They might not say that it's the word of God or so and so and accept it, but they have to accept at least its history, how it's been passed on, that there's been done no changes to it. No change. And that it's been given to us as Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu received it. So we need to believe, we need to know, we need to have firm faith because the Quran is Hudan Lil Muttaqeen. It's a guidance, it's not just a book. Actually, you cannot just read the Quran. The Quran is not a book to be read. The Quran is a book to be studied. You study the Quran. The Quran gives you everything from the beginning to the end. The Quran is the speech of Allah. Everyone will find guidance in it from the guy who sweeps the streets to the brain surgeon and the scientist. Everyone will find depth basics, everything for him in this life. This is the Quran, there's no doubt in it. There's no, nothing that people can attack. Actually, anyone who stands against the Quran will really make a big fool out of himself. And we've seen it throughout history. And it happens still today. People are trying to attack the Quran. And they only make fools of themselves. Because the Quran itself will refute these people. The Quran itself will answer these people. The Quran itself actually needs no defense. This is the book, subhanAllah. Imagine who can ever say, who can ever have the audacity other than Allah to say, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي قَيْدِ مِمَّا نَزَّلَ عَلَىٰ أَبْدِنَا فَاتُّوا بِسُورَةٍ مِنْ مِثْلِهِ يعني if you are in doubt, if anyone has a doubt about this book, subhanAllah, Allah is giving the litmus test. Allah is giving you the test. If you are in doubt about this book, what I reveal to my servant, then you make something like it. And as one of the scholars said, very simple, the difference between the Quran and the speech of men is like the difference between God and men. No one can come up with anything like the Quran. Why? Because it's from Allah. It's the words of Allah. No one can speak the words of Allah. So such we find that it's been 1400 plus years and no one has ever been able to bring anything close to the Quran. And the Quran has challenged them. Challenged them. What does it say? And if you will not do it, and indeed, it says, you will not be able to do it. Fear the fire whose fuel is man and stone. It's prepared for those who disbelieve. People have taken it. People have tried. They've tried. They've hit hard wall. And still they're not willing to change. Imagine, Allah is telling you, man, you can't do it. Do it, come on. Do it. And they can't do it. You have computers today. People say, oh, but Arabic. There's Christian Arabics, come, Arab, Arab Christians from everywhere. We have computers and friends and everything. Why can they do it? They cannot do it. Allah is telling you, you will not be able to do it. So, but again, the Quran is Hudan lil Muttaqeen. People who are not Ghayr Muttaqeen, they're not Muttaqeen, they will not find guidance from the Quran. They might believe that it's an excellent text, that yes, there's no contradictions, yes, there's. But they will not be guided. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, guide us, and protect us 
Allahumma ya muqallibal qulub thabbit qulubana ala dinik We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep our hearts steady on this deen, on Islam, on the Qur'an Allahumma ajjal Qur'an arabiya qulubana wa nur sudurina May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the Qur'an the spring and the light of our hearts and guide us through it and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us and let the Qur'an be a shaheed for us on a day of judgment when, the, when Allah will tell us read as you read in dunya and every person who read will be raised by level of how many verses they read and brothers and sisters I end with this let's not be like the people who came before Let's not be like the ones who have taken the books. They've just memorized it, but they did not understand it and practice it. So Allah compared them with donkeys carrying books on their back. Because we can memorize. Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed us with this. But we need to pay attention, understand, and practice. Wallahi, if we practice 10 verses from the Qur'an, this whole world will change. And that's why the Sahabas changed the world. Because they will not move on till they implemented those 10 verses.